Hello, my name is Alice Ballerini and I'm a PhD student at the University of Modena e Reggio Emilia. Today I present to you my work accepted in brain communication entitled Amygdala Subnuclear Volume in Temporal Lobe Epilepsy with Hippocampus Sclerosis and in non lesional Patients. Temporal lobe epilepsy is the most common focal epilepsy. Among TLE, two main electroclinical types are recognized, mesial temporal lobe epilepsy and neocortical temporal lobe epilepsy. The greatest attention has been focused on the hippocampus, as the hippocampus sclerosis is the recognized as the most common cause of TLE. However, an increase in amygdala volume called amygdala enlargement has recently been proposed as morphological biomarker of a subtype of temporal lobe epilepsy patients without MRI abnormalities. In the studies, amygdala was treated as a single entity, while instead it is composed by different nuclei, each with a peculiar function and connection. By adopting a new free surfer methodology of amygdala subnuclear se segmentation based on high resolution T1 weighted images, we segmented the amygdala in nine different nuclei. The nine nuclei were organized in groups or complexes based on their reciprocal connection and specific function. These studies aim to map specific amygdalar subnuclei participation in TLE due to hippocampal sclerosis and non lesional TLE. With respect to patients with extra temporal lobe epilepsies and controls. First of all, to account for the side of the epileptic focus, subcortical measurements of right patients were flipped in order to have all the morphometric data to the epileptic focus on the left hemisphere. All morphometric subcortical analyses are then reported as ipsilateral or contralateral. Before the amygdala subnuclei exploration, we perform a segmentation of the hippocampus and the thalamus. This additional segmentation were required because the strict anatomical and functional relationships between these two subcortical structures and the amygdala. Our results showed an overall atrophy of the ipsilateral hippocampus in TLE with hippocampal sclerosis patients compared to all the other population and an overall atrophy of the ipsilar thalamus in TLE with hippocampus sclerosis patients compared to controls. This atrophy was particularly expressed in the anterior nucleus, mediodorsal part, and the pulvinar. Regarding the amygdala, in TLE population with hippocampus sclerosis, the whole amygdala ipsilateral to the hippocampus damage showed an overall atrophy compared to all the other population. Particularly, the basolateral complex and its nuclei appear more involved than other complexes. The non lesional TLE patients showed a complete different pattern. In these patients, the amygdala is not reducted in its volume compared to controls. Indeed, it showed an isolated hypertrophy to the central medial portion in particular in the medial nucleus. We did not find any correlation between clinical variables and the amygdala morphometric measure in both TLE populations. Although limited by the small number of patients, we tested any significant relation between the presence of psychiatric comorbidity and the amygdala volume. An increase of volume in the ipsilateral lateral nucleus was observed in non lesional TLE with anxiety depressive disorder with respect to those without. Finally, we found an increase of medial nucleus volume contralateral to the epileptic focus in extra TLE patients. In conclusion, Our study confirms the role and engagement of the amygdala in mesial temporal sclerosis ipsilateral to the hippocampal damage. 
we found a greater volume of the wall amygdala in non-lesional TLE compared to controls, but it did not result as significant. Otherwise, the hypertrophic of the medial amygdala, ipsilateral to the epileptic, epileptic focus, could be an interesting starting point for better understanding the role of the amygdala substructures in non-lesional TLE. Finally, due to the finding on the increase of medial nucleus contralateral to the epileptic focus in extra TLE patients, this present analysis supports the idea that the increased volume of the amygdala represents an unspecific finding common across different types of epilepsy syndromes. Future studies will benefit from longitudinal monitoring to determine whether the amygdala and its subnuclei change during the individual's clinical progression and its role in the psychiatric comorbidities in TLE patients. Thank you all for your attention. If you have queries and comments, please feel free to contact us.